Hi, it's Ms. Vital. This is the fifth and final podcast on plants for AP Biology. Phototrophism is the growth of a plant towards or away from light. The cells on the darker side are longer, making a shoot bend. Hormones control the growth rates of cells. There are five major hormones that regulate plant growth. Auxin is a hormone that promotes elongation in seeds. IAA, indoleic acid, is a natural auxin. It's produced by the apical meristem at the tip of the shoot. It moves down the stem and elongates the cells. Auxin works at certain levels, but if there is too much, it causes cells to produce ethylene, which reverses auxin's effects. Low concentration of auxin causes the root cells to elongate. Higher levels cause the stem cells to elongate, and the root cells are inhibited. Auxin also induces cell division in vascular cambium, which increases the stem diameter, and it promotes the growth of fruit. Cytokinins promote cytokinesis, or cell division. They are produced in growing tissues, like embryos, roots, and fruit. Cytokinins are influenced by auxin concentration. For example, a terminal bud produces auxin. That inhibits the auxiliary buds. If the terminal bud is removed, it allows cytokines from the roots to activate the auxiliary buds. This is why we prune plants to stop them from getting long and leggy and to cause them to get bushier and fall out more. Gibberellins are growth regulators. There are over a hundred different kinds. They're produced in the roots and in young leaves. They stimulate cell elongation and cell division in the stems, so they enhance auxin. They're also important in seed germination. ABA, or hibiscus acid, slows down growth. It is produced during the dormancy in seeds, and it helps plants withstand drought by causing the stomata to close. Ethylene is a gas, and it triggers aging. Fruit ripeness and causes cell, it causes fruit ripening and cell death. It's produced in response to stress. Flushing with carbon dioxide inhibits fruit ripening. Ethylene also causes the leaves to fall off in the autumn. What happens is the leaf separates from the stem at the abscission layer, which is a narrow band of parenchyma cells. Trophisms is a growth response that makes a plant grow toward or away from a stimulus. Phototrophism is a response to light. The shoot tips contain a protein pigment that detects light and passes the message to molecules that affects auxin transport. Gravitotrophism is a response to gravity. Shoots grow up, that's a negative response to gravity, and roots grow down, that's a positive response to gravity. The hypothesis for this is that gravity pulls organelles containing dense starches to lower points of the cells, which redistributes the auxin. If you hung a plant upside down, the roots would turn and grow down, and the stems would turn and grow up. Thigmatrophism is growth movement in response to touch. For example, tendrils wrap around objects. Contact stimulates growth at different rates on each side of the tendril. Circadian rhythm is the 24-hour biological clock. It exists without environmental cues, and circadian rhythms are controlled by biological clocks. The photoperiod is the relative length of day and night. It is used by plants to detect the time of year. Short-day plants flower late in the summer, fall, or winter. Poinsettia is an example of a short-day plant. Long-day plants flower in late spring, early summer, and an example are spinach and irises. Short-day and long-day plants are actually controlled by night length. It will not bloom if the night is interrupted by a flash of light. A flash of dark during the day has no effect. So in order to control blooming and to force it, for example, people who raise flowers and we need for them to bloom for Valentine's Day in February, all they have to do is interrupt the night with a flash of red light. This triggers the plant into thinking that daylight is about to begin and the plant perceives the night as being shorter and the day as being longer and that 
can force blooming out of season. Phytochromes are a colored protein in plants that contains a special set of atoms that absorb light. The light absorbed is red, so they appear blue or blue-green. Red light is the most effective in interrupting night length, therefore affecting blooming. There's two forms of phytochrome, PR, which is red absorbing at about 660 nanometer wavelength, and PFR, which is far red absorbing at about 730 nanometers. The phytochrome goes back and forth between the two forms. So what happens is the PR absorbs red light, which changes it to PRF. When PFR absorbs far red light, it changes back to PR. So the PR accumulates at night. When the sun rises, it's converted to PFR. The sudden increase of PFR at sunrise resets the biological clock. In other words, that's the beginning of the day for the plant. Plants have various defenses, thorns, chemicals that prevent the plant from being eaten. An example is cannabine. It's an amino acid similar to arginine. When the insect eats the plant, it uses cannabine instead of arginine to build proteins, and therefore the protein is abnormal, so the insect dies. Sometimes plants can attract wasps that kill the caterpillars to eat the plants. The caterpillar's saliva actually triggles, triggers a signal transduction pathway in the plant cells. This causes the release of gases that attracts the wasps. The wasps inject their eggs into the caterpillar, and when the eggs hatch, the larvae of the wasp eats the caterpillar from the inside out. There are other types of pathogen defenses in plants. The first line of defense for a plant is its epidermis, or its skin. However, pathogens can enter the stomata or wounds on a plant. So the second line of defense that they have are chemicals. Plant cells release chemicals that kill microbes. They also, the cells have tough walls, which can slow the spread of microbes. Some plants become resistant to microbes, so the microbes survive and reproduce in the plant, but the plant doesn't die. What happens is the plant and the microbe make a complementary pair of molecules. The plant has R genes, that's for resistance. The microbe has AVR genes, that's a virulence. That means it's a non-virulent form of the pathogen. The R gene codes for a receptor protein on the plant cell. The AVR gene codes for a signal receptor molecule that binds to the receptor. I'm sorry, it codes for a signal molecule that binds to the receptor. When this binding occurs, a defense response stronger than normal occurs. The cells at the site of the infection release a lot of chemical defenses. So the area is sealed off and the cells die with the pathogens. This causes spots on the leaves. Hormones are also produced that signal other parts of plants to produce additional defense chemicals. This is called systemic acquired resistance.